Allahu Akbar 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhin A'lamt Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين آمين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع إنه إلا بإذنه يا له ما بين عيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يهيتون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسيا قرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤذه حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamidah Allahu Akbar 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim as-sirat al-ladhi na'namt alayhim Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim mulad Dalin Ameen Kul ya ayyuhal لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما أبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي الدين Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar 
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul Amma ba'du fa'auzu billahi minash shaitonir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshiped except almighty Allah the one true God and I testify that Muhammad upon whom be peace is his servant messenger and the last of the prophets and I begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahil Hamd. Kul in Nasolati wa Nusuki wa Mahiaya wa Mamati lillahi rabbil alami. لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين Say my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death are surely for Allah the Lord of the worlds No associate has he and this am I commanded and I am the first of those who submit. Chapter, 60, chapter 6, verse 162 to 163. <laughs> لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَبَخْشِرُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Not their flesh nor their blood reaches Allah, but to Him is acceptable observance of duty on your part. Thus has He made them subservient to you, that you may magnify Allah for guiding you aright, and give good news to those who do good to others. Normally on this day, which comes towards the end of the pilgrimage, the Qurbani is observed. This is the sacrifice of an animal which is meant to replicate the spirit of sacrifice shown by the Prophet Abraham when he was ready to sacrifice his son Ishmael in obedience to the divine command. The root word for Qurbani means in English, nearness. And are we not seeking nearness to Allah through our sacrifice today? Nearness here does not denote physical distance, because He is in all directions, in front and behind, left and right, above and below. Like a dry sponge that is then immersed in water, we too must be immersed in the attributes of Allah and let them reside on the outside as well as inside. Prophet Abraham extolled the true concept of God from one of a polytheistic creed that depicted the gods as tyrannical and punitive 
to whom human offerings were made. And he transformed it to that of a loving, merciful and caring God of the universe. He openly, at great risk to his own life, defied the worship of the stars, the moon and the sun. He destroyed idols so as to challenge worshippers to entreat the very idols to identify the perpetrator which he argued should be easy for them if they were alive and all-knowing. His uncompromising opposition to the worshipping of idols is prophetic of the advent of the holy prophet Muhammad upon whom he peace, who put a final nail in the coffin of idol worship and who referred to Abraham as my father and whose faith he was commanded to follow. Abraham was indeed a precursor of and an inseparable link to that grind grand divine institution that ultimately firmly established man's complete submission to the will of Allah called Islam. Under divine guidance, Abraham introduced an entirely new meaning to the concept of sacrifice. He championed what can be most probably be seen today as groundbreaking human rights activism. When he entrenched what all Muslims celebrate today, the preservation and sanctity of human life. Under divine guidance, he understood that the offering of his son, Ishmael, was only meant that his son was to play a leadership role in laying the foundation of a futuristic new world order that was ushered in by the universal and final prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. The Holy Quran refers to this. And we enjoined Abraham and Ishmael saying, Purify my house for those who visit it and those who abide in it for devotion and those who bow down and those who prostrate themselves. Chapter 2 verse 125. In another place it says, and when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the house, our Lord accept from us. Chapter 2, verse 127. The house is a reference to the holy Kaaba in Makkah, which is widely regarded as the first house of worship and a symbol of true monotheism. This prayer of Abraham and Ishmael was answered in the form of the Holy Prophet Muhammad with whom religion was perfected. But the Holy Quran states in chapter 5 verse 3, This day I have perfected for you your religion. The Quran makes it clear that the sacrificing of the animals is for the humanitarian reasons in both a physical and moral sense. Chapter 22 verse 37 says, neither their flesh nor their blood reaches Allah but to him is ac acceptable observance of duty on your part. So the whole concept that God stands in need of animal offerings is extinguished. The sacrificial act is to impress on man the need to sacrifice his own animal tendencies for higher moral qualities of righteousness and justice. This is what the Holy Quran in several places calls upon the believers to do. For example, it says, O you who believe, violate not the signs of Allah, nor the sacred month, nor the offerings, and let not hatred of a people, because they hindered you from the sacred mosque, incite you to transgress. And help one another in righteousness and piety, and help not one another in sin and aggression. Chapter 5 verse 2. This verse lays down a principle of uprightness in dealing with even those we may, may not like. A code the modern international world is sorely in need of. We are called upon to sacrifice vengeful tendencies for the sake of righteousness and piety. We are warned not to transgress and violate the rights of others by sinful and aggressive means. This brings us to the subject of the violations of Muslims by Muslims that is all too pervasive. This aggression we witness in the form of suicide bombings and other manifestations of violence 
are in direct violation of the clear commandments of the Holy Quran. It is further clearly stated in the Holy Quran. Do not cast yourselves to destruction by your own hands. Chapter 2, verse 195. And in chapter 4, verse 29, do not kill yourselves. On days like today, when we celebrate the sanctity of human life, Muslims should use the occasion of Eid al-Adha to collectively condemn barbaric acts of suicide bombings, though ill-intended malicious processes of indoctrination and, and brainwashing. Young boys and girls are led to believe that mass murder and suicide are sanctified as pious under the guise of jihad and martyrdom. This is totally against the teachings of the Holy Quran. These are blatant criminal acts and have nothing to do with religion. What these innocent children should be taught is, the self is that self-destruction or suicide is sin in Islam and it is self-preservation of human life that is a duty of every Muslim, whether young or old. They should be taught that the true definition of a martyr in Islam is one who dies as a result of someone else's hostile action against them, which they themselves resist as far as possible in defense of human rights and the preservation of life. It is the abolition of human sacrifices, not its continuation, that we celebrate today. In commemoration of the great patriarch Abraham, and his devoted son Ishmael. What is the collective duty of Muslims with regard to the Hajj? Chapter 22 verse 27 states, and proclaim for men the Hajj. We know that due to the current global pan pandemic, the Hajj is not possible. But it does not mean that we cannot take and derive certain lessons from that most celebrated pillar of Islam. Every Muslim should pass a noble message of the, of the Hajj to all mankind, especially to those who belong to the progeny of Abraham, like the Jews and the Christians, and even the Hindus. It is this coming together that brings into the domain of practicality what would otherwise seem impossible, namely that all people, to whatever class or country they belong, are equal in birth and in death. <clears throat> that they come into life and pass out of it in the same way. Let them celebrate with us on this occasion which mankind is taught to live alike and how to act and how to feel alike. But we can only do this effectively if we carry forth the great lesson of the Hajj into our own lives and practically doing so, and stop the hostilities that are rending the unity of the human race apart. The lessons of Hajj carries with it many benefits, including material benefits. The seeking of bounty is accepted by commentators as meaning that seeking the increase in one's wealth by means of trade and during the pilgrimage season is allowed. In chapter 2 verse 198, it is no sin that you seek the bounty of your Lord. So that the Holy Quran does not, thus does not, the Holy Quran thus not only allows the carrying on of trade in the pilgrimage season, but in a way recommends it by calling it a bounty of your Lord. It is easy to see that even if trading is allowed in the pilgrimage season, this great assemblage of Muslims from all quarters of the world may also be made the occasion of other ad made the occasion of other advantages of a material or cultural nature, and it should be it should serve the purpose of unifying the Muslim world and removing misunderstanding between nation and nation. Worldwide conferences are held on many occasions and this should in the new conditions of the world be a regular feature of the Hajj. 
and the best minds among the various nations should on this occasion discuss all problems affecting the world, not the least important of which is the advancement of Islam itself. They should engage in dialogue and consultation with each other around issues such as unity based on the Holy Kalima, finding peaceful solutions to the political and sectarian differences, put in place effective steps based on a spirit of sincerity and fear of Allah to stop all the violence, the upliftment of society through proper education, health care and financial security regardless of gender or race, propagation of Islam through peaceful means, condemnation and prohibition of all forms of extremism that breed fanaticism, intolerance and social evils, protection and procurement of the environment, its cultural heritages and natural resources. Look at building an economy based on non usurious banking systems backed by healthy trade and industrial means and relations. Maintain a constitution based on freedom of political choice, religion and speech underpinned by a code of moral and ethical decency and respect for all. Until the Muslim community has evolved to the stage of using the occasion of Hajj to this ultimate advantage for which Allah has provided for them, they will not have achieved the true all-pervading ben benefits of the pilgrimage. This wonderful institution of a united human race under one God. My dear sisters and brothers, the Ahmadiyya Anjuman is founded upon the doctrine of sacrifice and the essence of which is stated in the Quranic verse chapter 6 verse 162 after all what does our pledge say it says in Urdu Deen ko dunya par mukaddam karu ga that I will hold religion above worldly things certain situations will arise that I will have to make a choice a choice between the path to religion or something that makes me comfortable. When we perform the sacrifice today and every single day of the year, let us place the knife on the neck of the rebellious animal within us, the animal attitude that breaches the nearness to God we achieve at the time of Qurbani. Only then will we achieve the true happiness. Eid means recurring happiness. We will achieve it once there is nothing inside us that incites us to evil. Let us follow, let us take pattern from the great sacrifices of the patriarch Abraham and his son Ishmael, whose symbolic act helped to shape that which we proudly celebrate today. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa i'ayakum bil ayati was Zikril Hakim, Innahu Ta'ala Jawadun Kareem, Malikun Barul Raufur Rahim. Amen. Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadahu, when Nastarinahu, when Nastaghfiruhu, when not Minubihi, when not Tawakalu Alai, when Aruzubillah, him in Shururi and Fusina, when Min Sai Ati Armalina. May yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlilhu fala hadi Allah. Allahum mansur man nasaradina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa j'alna minhum. Allahum makhzul man khazaladina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim Wa ala ala Ibrahim, innaka hamidum majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, innaka hamidum majid. 
Inna Allaha ya'muru bil adli wa ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'izzakum la'allakum tadhakkurun Ibadullahi uskurullah yaskurukum wad'u yastajib lakum wala dhikrullah ki akbar Assalamu alaikum Peace be unto you Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Ayasi so sunuki pe kurra Haku milita nahi kapi nasa Ayasi so sunuki pe kurra Haku milita nahi kapi nasa Jin ko sanur ki kapar hi nahi Un pe us yaar ki nasar hi nahi He ye furka ka ek jeep asar Ho pana ta he aashiki dil par E yasi so suno ke pe kurra Hako milita nahi kabhi nasa Dil me har waat anood par ta hai Sine ko koop saaf karta hai Uske or saaf kya karu me baya Wo to deta hai ja ko or ek jaan E yasi so suno ke pe kurra Haku milita nahi kabhi nasa Wo to chamaka hai neri akbar Usse nakar ho sake kyu kar Behre hikmat hai wo kalamat maam Ishqe haq ka pila raha hai jam Wo hame dil sita talak laya Uske paane se yaar ko paaya Ayasi so suno ke pe kurra Haku milita nahi kabhi nasa Ayasi so suno ke pe kurra Haku milita nahi kabhi nasa Haku milita nahi kabhi nasa Translation Listen, O my dear ones, without the Quran, a man can never find God. Those who are not aware of this light of the Quran cannot have their beloved set his eyes on them. A marvelous quality of the Quran is that it makes one a lover of the beloved God. It fills the heart all the time with light and cleanses the breast of all impurities. How can I describe the qualities of the Quran? It surely imparts a new life to life. It shines like a great sun. How can one deny its radiance? All its revelation is like the sea of wisdom. It constantly offers the cup of divine love to the seeker. The Quran has brought us right to the threshold of the sweetheart. We found our beloved when we found the Quran. Amin. Assalamu alaikum.
Thank you for joining us. Tune in again next week for another episode of Our Islam, Peace, Not Hostility. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be on to you. Thank you.